Die for Jesus. Amen. This is just an appeal. If you are an IPYPU state or council president, I want you to meet me over here on this side. If you are here representing your council for the PYPU services, looking for all state presidents and state president representatives to meet me here on this side in Jesus' name. Come on, let us stand as we go before the throne of grace, amen. Some of us are still in his presence, amen, but we're waiting for the glory cloud to set in, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Grab the hand that is next to you and let us go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to say that you are good and your mercy endures forever, oh God. Your love is everlasting, oh God, and we come to give you glory this morning. God, we ask you, oh God, to let your glory cloud rain in this place this morning oh God someone needs a touch from heaven oh God uh, we don't have time for this or that but we just need a touch from heaven oh God rain in this place oh God today uh, set someone free oh God uh, God heal oh God and deliver God set us free from all the bondage all the riffraff all the distractions oh God uh, we will not go home the same uh, God let your word today uh, let it fall on good ground oh God uh, someone needs a word today oh God uh, someone needs to be broke free uh, someone needs to be reminded uh, that they got what it takes uh, oh God we're calling for greater God we're calling for greater today oh God God we pull on your anointing oh God let the fire that the hand that I'm holding today let it ricochet oh God let it ricochet in this place oh God that we may have revival today we're calling souls today to baptism we're calling souls today to the Holy Ghost we're calling souls today to come back home in the name of Jesus, I believe someone's going to get a call that their son and daughter is coming back home. I believe someone's getting ready for a miracle. Someone's getting ready for a miracle. Someone's getting ready for a miracle. And we believe it. We believe it today because you are God. You are God. You are God. You are God. And so we believe it is so. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We thank God for the spirit of victory that's in this place this morning. Can you give your can you give God praise for the spirit of victory that's here? Hallelujah. Our scripture reading is going to come from Psalms 34, and it is a psalm of victory. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and their faces were lighted and they were not ashamed. This poor man cried unto the Lord and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed, blessed, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I believe the scripture said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Is there anybody glad to be in the building this morning? Hallelujah. 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 We are excited. We are grateful. Go 
forth in praise and worship. And we want you to just join on in with us as we sing a couple of congregational songs. So go ahead, feel free to put your hands together. Feel free to move around as you desire as we exalt and lift up the name of Jesus. God is great and greatly to be praised.
Hallelujah. How many know that we serve a mighty God? Mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. He is mighty. Hallelujah. And how awesome is it to be loved by such a great God? Hallelujah. Is there anybody that can attest to God's love? Hallelujah. He loves us. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his own life. He loved us so much that he decided to take on the beating all night. He loves us so much. Hallelujah. And I want you to begin to lift your hands and begin to sing your song of adoration to your God because it is all about him. Hallelujah. And we appreciate him. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship him. Thank you, Lord. Just worship him. Just worship him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our hearts cry. Yes, God. Be magnified in this your holy temple. In this your holy place. And we will rise to Zion's heights to praise and glorify. Unify and oh, how we love. And oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's heights to praise and glorify. Come on, everybody, say unify. Say, oh, how we love. 
Say, oh, how we praise you. Say, oh, how we worship. Say, oh, Lord. Say, oh, how we love you. Come on, lift this up to the King of Kings. Oh, how we praise you. Come on, can we lift our hands in this place and magnify the name of the Most High God? Oh, how we worship him. Why don't you worship him? Oh, why, how we praise him. Why don't we praise him? Oh, how we magnify his name. Well, why don't you magnify his name? He's a mighty God. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side? Where would we be today if it had not been for God? 
who was on our side. Oh, we worship you. We magnify you. We exalt your holy name. Amen. Can we please bless God for the praise team? Can we bless God for the praise team? Amen. Well, praise the Lord, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. Did anybody wake up this morning to have a good time? For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I remember in the scripture where the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the high priests, hallelujah, they went to the master and say, Master, please tell your servants, your disciples to shut up. Please tell them to close their mouths. And the master replied and said, even if they shut their mouths, even if they don't say anything, even the rocks are still going to cry out. Well, I came all the way from North Carolina to say, I don't need no rocks to cry out for me. I can praise him for myself. Is there anybody in here that can say, I don't need an element. I don't need a part of the earth to cry out for me. For myself. Amen. Protocol has been established. We bless God for our being here. Amen. I thank God for our presiding bishop. Amen. Our assistant presiding bishops to our advisor, to our president. Amen. President Kyron Shorter to my diocesan bishop, Marion E. Wright. We bless God. Amen. For his presence. I'm here to give the welcome address. But where I'm from, we don't talk a lot. <laughs> Amen. Where I'm from, we don't talk a lot, but we bless the Lord as much as we can. But we welcome you. We want you to know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And liberty has been in the city of St. Louis. Can the church say amen? And we ask that you come here. We ask that you not sit in judgment. I know you have your nice hairstyles and your four and five hundred dollar pair of shoes. But there's a God whose value is worth more than anything that we have on. So we ask that you allow yourself to be free. We ask that you allow yourself to feel welcome. Our hospitality, the best of hospitality from the IPYPU has been extended to you to bless the Lord as much as you see fit. So again, on behalf of President Shorter and his administration, we welcome you to the IPYPU morning worship. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Smile at somebody and tell them I'm happy to see you in the house of the Lord today. Oh, smile at somebody else you like a little bit better and tell them I'm happy to see you in the house of the Lord today. Listen, I am so excited about what God has been doing. The testimonies have already been coming in on the goodness and the favor of the Lord. We've seen souls be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. We have seen God move. We've heard great fresh voices and we've heard uh, the wisdom of our presiding bishop and speakers such as Bishop Tolbert and Bishop Jones and Evangelist Golder. So we thank God for them. We're going to bring our praise thing back for one more song. After that, uh, we will then hear from Bishop Foster to uh, take up our offering. So would you uh, welcome our praise thing back in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, IPYPU. Oh, come on, saints of the living God. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's an invitation. Praise the Lord, everybody. Touch your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. Come on, you're looking at me. I said, look at your neighbor. I said, tell your neighbor, hey, hey, I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. Can you stand up on your feet? Can we sing this song together? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say bless, 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 say bless, bless, one more time, everybody say I'm blessed, say you're blessed, say bless, bless, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, say we're blessed, we're blessed,
you to clap your hands and give the Lord praise. He's more than able, more than able. I know he is. Yeah. I believe he is. We give the Lord praise. 
place this morning. Just wave at somebody, tell them God will turn it around. I wish you would increase some faith today. Just wave at a few people and tell them God will turn this around. If you believe it, I need you to open up your mouth like you believe God this morning. Too quiet in this house. Somebody lift your head and shout, I believe God. Come up from your belly, shout, I believe God. He will perform. He will turn it around. Clap your hands like you know for yourself that he specializes in things impossible. Oh, come on, somebody clap your hands and give him glory. I don't know about you, but I need a few people to agree with me that before I get on the plane tomorrow, it shall be well. Just stretch out the island. So he will perform. He will turn it around. Somebody encourage this section right here. Stretch your hands toward this section and say, he shall perform. I need a praiser right here. Somebody clap your hands and give him glory like you know. He's more than able. Yes, he is. 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 I need a praiser right now. Lift that voice. Lift that hand. And declare God will turn it around. God will turn it around. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Again, for his keeping power, we thank God for sustaining us. We know that God is yet able to turn things around for us, and we declare victory even before we leave this great gathering that God will perform 
that God will do. We certainly thank and God, praise God for his goodness and his mercy. We certainly give deference to our presiding bishop and our first and second assistant presiding bishops and their spouses. And we certainly thank God for this college of pastors uh, that we have amongst us and presidents. And so we say praise the Lord to everyone. Amen. It's with great honor that I introduce to some, present to others, our auxiliary director of the IPYPU who is going to come today and assist us with our morning offering. Uh, he now uh, serves as one of the regional bishops of our great organization. And he served our, the young people for quite some time. Amen. Former state president. He's from the Wynn District Council. Amen. Wyoming, uh, 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 Iowa, and Nebraska. <laughs> Amen. But help me celebrate God for Bishop Lance Foster. Come on, give God a hand praise as he comes to receive the offering this morning. Thank you so much, President. Sure. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to be here this morning. I, I thank God for allowing me to wake up this morning with all of my faculties and been able to see and hear. God has been good to us and I appreciate his goodness and his kindness. Probably didn't get into bed until 12.30 or one o'clock, but I wanted to be here this morning for morning prayer. I think it is so important for us to go before the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord, and I was a praying this morning the Holy Spirit impressed upon me that anything you need, I'll give it to you. Now, I'm not just dealing with money. A lot of times we're thinking that our need is money. But there are some things that money cannot do for us. There are some things that money cannot do to us because millionaires and billionaires that have bought airplanes and they fly around, money can't keep that from crashing. It is the power of God that keeps us in the air. So he was letting me know that anything you need, I'll give it to you. Anything. Somebody say anything. The Lord says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Somebody say expectation. Expectation is not wishing. It is something that you are expecting to happen. And the Lord says also in the book of Philippians that he will provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And I look up that word glory sometimes we're thinking that that word glory in that verse means heaven but when I begin to do some study on that word glory one of the words that in that word glory from the Greek it means expectation I will provide all of your needs according to my riches of the expectation that I have for you whatever assignment that I've given you, I'm going to give you whatever you need. How many of you all have ever, uh, uh, ever had to do something, but you were afraid? Fear was trying to grip you. Has anybody ever been there where fear is trying to stop you and you feeling less than somebody else is trying to stop you? Well, I want you to know the Holy Ghost is telling you whatever you need, I'm going to give it to you. I'll take away fear from you. Somebody raise your hand and say, Lord, take away fear from me. And whatever I need, I'm, I'm not just talking about money. I'm, I'm talking about whatever you need. The Holy Ghost will build you up. It may take some time, but he's going to work on you. I love this auxiliary because this is where a lot of things started for me. I used to be the assistant treasurer in our council and then the treasurer and then the vice president of our council. And then one time I woke up to a phone call and the president said, I'm relocating. Mm. So now you're going to have to be the president of our council in the IPYPU. At that time, you all, I wasn't even a minister. 
Do you know why I wasn't a minister? Because at nine years old, I knew that I was going to be a pastor. And I wanted to preach so bad that I wouldn't preach. You know why? Because I thought it was me calling me. I wanted to preach so bad. It took somebody that told me, Lance, if you don't start preaching, you're going to go to hell. How many don't want to go to hell? Look at somebody and say, I don't want to go to hell. But look at somebody and point at them and say, but if God's giving you an assignment, you have to do it. Don't worry about what your fears are, your weaknesses. You got to do it. I finally started preaching. And that's why this auxiliary is so important to me because it pushed me into something. And I appreciate your president. God has blessed him in a tremendous way. I appreciate the officers. God has blessed them in a tremendous way. And now we are here this morning at the beginning. We started out with prayer. Now we are in this service. And this is going to be the beginning of this conference for the IPYPU in 2023. And we want to set a precedence. We want to make sure that this service is going to bless every IPYPU service in these next two days. Come on and give God some praise here. Now, I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost speak to you. But I need 500 people to join in this offering today. I understand that all of the state presidents are going to give 50. I need to make sure that we have 50 people that are going to give $50. I'm not going to have you to stand right now. I'm going to have you stand later. I need 50 people to give $50. And I need 200 people to give $25. And I need 250 people to give $10. We want to reach $10,000 today. Look at somebody and say, I think we can do it. Now that was quiet there. So that means I got to give. So if you're going to give 50, if you're going to give 25, if you're going to give 10, stand on your feet. I'm going to let you choose. If you're going to give 50, if you're going to give 25, you're going to give 10 or if you're going to give something said now he didn't even ask for my number I'm going to give $100 I don't know it might be some of you I'm going to start this off with $150 50, 25 and 10 but if you're going to give 5 that's fine if you're going to give 100 that's fine everyone we need everyone that is going to give something to stand on your feet and we're going to let the Holy Ghost speak to you for what you're going to give today. We're going to bless this department. We're going to bless this auxiliary. We want Pastor Shorter to be able to leave this place and say, thank you, Jesus. We want every state president to be able to leave this place and say, look at what we've done by the help of the Lord. Now, come on and give God a praise that you're able to give. Give God a praise that God has blessed you in a tremendous way. Give God a praise that you yet have a job. Give God a praise that you can take a deep breath this morning. Give God a praise that you can move your hands. Give God a praise that you can move your feet. Give God a praise that you can look and see and distinguish colors in your eyes. God is good to us and we thank him. We also have the uh, ability to give in several ways. Is that right? Are you gonna put that up on the screen? You will be able to give in several ways. We appreciate what you've done. We appreciate how the Lord has blessed you. Now, turn to somebody, give them a hug, and say thank you for supporting this auxiliary this morning. Give somebody a hug. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you're blessing. We appreciate you, and we appreciate your liberality. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Is there a giving video that you're going to show right now? All right. You want, to, you want them to give? Where are you face countless challenges? There's a place that offers hope, guidance, and a brighter future. The International Pentecostal Young People's Union's mission is to inspire and empower youth and young adults through training and development, community service, resources, global fellowship, and networking. We believe in the power of nurturing young minds, fostering their talents, and empowering them to become tomorrow's leaders. But we can't do it alone. 
We need your support to continue making a difference in the lives of these incredible young individuals. By giving today, your donation can help ensure that this 90-year legacy continues in its tradition of innovation and relevance. Your contribution to the IPYPU will help shape the future, equipping young minds with the tools they need to overcome obstacles and reach their full potential as leaders both now and in the future. Join us in making a difference. Give by choosing one of the following methods on the screen. Together, let's ensure this legacy continues. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise again. Give God a praise for how the Lord is blessing us with the media. God is good to us, and I thank him for his great kindness. All right? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for your kindness, and we thank you for your power. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to say thank you, Jesus for the things that you've done for us and for the things that you are doing for us and how you're blessing us and how you're helping us and how you're giving us strength. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to give today. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have the substance to give. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. And we say, Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We're going to ask if everyone in the sanctuary will please stand at this time. We're going to ask if these two sections will please turn and face each other. These two sections, please turn and face each other. If you are in one of the sections in the back, if you will please come and join one of the sections in the front, the ushers will lead you from the back. Please follow their instructions. There are tables here in the front if you want to give by credit card on this morning. We thank you so much. Let's try. 
Come on, give God praise all over this building today. Listen, I'm so excited to introduce to you our next musical guest, the Airettes from Kansas City, Missouri. They tore the place down last year and we had to bring them back. So can you stand on your feet and give a great IPYPU welcome to none other than the Airettes from Kansas City, Missouri in Jesus name. Now, we ain't from Kansas City. We from Junction City, Kansas. Uh, see, y'all don't even know where that's at, do y'all? That's about five hours from here, amen? And we are so thankful to be here, amen? We come here to fellowship with y'all. Come on, y'all. I like when folk like to talk back to me. Talk back to me. Amen. We giving our musicians a little second to get set up, but we want to thank the president, Pastor Shorter. We thank you so much for inviting us back. We are thankful for real. Now listen, we're a little quartet, y'all. So we may take off our shoes, wigs may get the tossing, but can we just be us in the Lord today? Can we be us in the Lord today, amen? These are my sisters, amen, and we just come to sing, can't take my blessing. You can't take what belongs to me, am I right? And he can't, nobody can't take what belong to you. Am I right? Am I right? Y'all quiet, but we're going to have some church this morning. I feel real good this morning. Because you know why? He's been good to me. 2023 been a, it's been trying to, but God, we stand on your word. And God, we know that you can't, nobody can take our blessing. We may can't see it right now, but it's coming. Come on, tell yourself, oh, my blessing is coming, it's coming, it's coming. We ready? All right. All right, sis, you ready? All right. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. Jesus gave it to me, and the world can't take it away. Cause it's mine, oh my, my, oh my, oh my. Hey, Jesus gave it to me, and the world can't take it away. Cause it's mine, oh my. Yeah. 
other than District Elder Philip Johnson. District Elder Johnson was saved at the young age of seven years old and was called to preach the gospel at 13. While under the pastorate of his father, Bishop Brader Johnson, Elder Johnson was trained from the age of 14 to the age of 32. He later succeeded his father and relaunched the church under the name Apostolic Life Church. Since then, the church has experienced rapid success. Under his pastorate, they were able to acquire a new church property for just one dollar. The new church sits on five acres, sits, seats 300 people, and offers state-of-the-art ministry amenities. In 2019, Pastor Johnson was elevated to the office of district elder in the Northern District Council, overseeing district number two. Elder Johnson and his lovely wife of 17 years, Amber Johnson, have two biological children and are the adopted parents of two additional children. Can you stand on your feet all over this building? 
and those of you who are watching online and give a great P-A-W-I-P-Y-P-U welcome to none other than our speaker for the hour, District Elder Philip Johnson, and greet him with a hearty preach the word. Amen. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus all over this house. Oh, I said put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, he's worthy. Does anybody know he's worthy? Come on, you ought to worship him for just a few seconds. Come on, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody ought to open up your mouth and give him praise all over this house. He is a good God. He is a good God. And I find no fault in him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. Amen. It is such a blessing, a tremendous honor to be before you on today in this great service. Of course, we give honor to the spirit of the Lord that is in this place. We have had church all week. Amen, somebody. I said we have had church all week long. God's presence has been here. It has met us in a profound way. And we're just looking to keep it going on this morning. We give honor to our presiding bishop, amen, in the person of Bishop Theodore Brooks. Come on, put your hands together for him, amen. And Mother Brooks, praise the Lord to our first assistant presider, amen, and our second, newly elected second assistant. Of course, we honor the memory of our former second assistant presider and the person of Bishop Michael Hanna, amen. We honor his memory on today. Praise God, we give honor to the auxiliary director for this ministry, Bishop Lance Foster. Come on, put your hands together for him. Great man of God, great preacher. Amen. Of course, uh, we honor your president. Amen. My friend and brother and the person of Pastor Shorter. Come on, put your hands together for him and his entire staff. Amen. Thank you so much for the invitation. We bless God for this wonderful consortium of state presidents, amen, and pastors. Praise the Lord. My state president is a member of my church, Elder Demetrius Phillips. Amen. Wherever he, oh, he's on the organ. Amen. He's also my organ. He's doing triple duty on today. Of course, I saw Bishop Weeks in the house. Amen. We give honor for, to her. Praise God. Amen. My auntie. Amen. Dr. Mary Ruth Montgomery. God bless you. Amen. The Suffolk Bishop Yolanda Hunt. To all of God's people, we say praise the Lord. Amen. I, my family is not here today. Uh, my, we were preparing to come to the convention on Sunday night. My 14-year-old son was sick all day on Sunday. And right as we were packing on Sunday night, I said, you may want to give him a test. And he tested positive for COVID. And so my wife was devastated. And so, amen. But they're at home. They're watching. And he is making a full recovery so we thank you uh, for those of you who prayed for him amen making a full recovery i give honor to my uh, diocesan and the person of bishop ira combs jr from the northern district council also honor uh, my father bishop Rita johnson from the the dominican republic council on today i'm happy to see uh, my friend and brother from the united pentecostal church Amen. Pastor John Pennington, would you stand, uh, Pastor, and just wave at everybody? Amen. He's a good friend and traveled, traveled from Southern Illinois to be with us on today. Amen. We traveled together to Pakistan uh, a few months back. Amen. And God met us in a powerful way. Praise the Lord. He, uh, we traveled across the globe together to minister and preach the gospel to persecuted Christians in an Islamic country and so we thank God for good courage that the Lord has blessed us with and of course I think I was looking online I think we do have some brothers and sisters from Pakistan watching on today just kind of scrolling through the chat and so we say praise the Lord to them we thank the Lord can we put our hands together for our brothers and sisters God is doing something in Pakistan that is fascinating and amazing Amen. As we went there, we were there for 10 days, and God blessed us. We baptized 198 people in Jesus' name. Over 100 people received the Holy Ghost. Y'all not making enough noise for that. God, I say y'all still ain't making enough noise for that. Y'all still ain't making enough noise for that. I, I said over 100 people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Many people were healed. We went to a service, and I'll share this before I get into the word. We went to a service 
And there were about 300 people in the sanctuary. And of course, we thought that they all had the Holy Ghost. But uh, as we began preaching about the Holy Ghost, I asked how many people in here have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Out of about 300 people, there were about seven people that raised their hands. And so I said, well, we need to come down and pray with another pastor uh, that was there with us. I said, we need to come down and pray. And as we began to pray and lay hands on every individual in that church, one by one, demons start manifesting. And when we got done, 90% of the church was demon possessed. And so we were there for three hours, just three of us, casting out devils. Amen. We were outnumbered in the natural, but if God be for you, it don't matter. You can have a whole legion against you. They've got to come out at the invocation of the name Jesus. I still believe in demon taming power. Do I have a witness in here? I still believe that there is power in the name of Jesus. One by one, one by one, every devil had to get up out of that place as we took authority in the name of Jesus. We were in a, uh, getting ready for a crusade and I was being taken into the house by my host. We were in a Muslim colony and of course, as they were walking me into the house, there was a man laying next door, just like in Bible days, how they laid by the roadside, they laid in the streets and there was a man next door laying on a bed in the street. It was early in the morning and of course they, my hosts that were ushering me into the house, they said, brother, can you pray for this man? He's paralyzed. And I said, you want me to pray out in the open? They said, yes, it's safe. I said, are you sure it's safe? Because in Pakistan, it's, it is an Islamic country. They're governed by Sharia law. And if you say anything negative that, or that can perceive to be negative about Muhammad or Islam or one of Muhammad's wives, you can be arrested, you can be tried, convicted, imprisoned, and in most cases, even put to death. And so I was very hesitant to do anything out in the open. But I said, well, if he needs prayer and he's Muslim and he's asking for prayer, Bishop, we need to go pray for him. And so I laid hands on him and called on the only name that I know that works, Jesus. And when I got done praying for him, he, he said, Inshallah, which in Arabic, it's what uh, Muslims invoke in Arabic, it means God willing. And when he said, Inshallah, I said, in the name of Jesus. Looked him in the eye and said, in the name of Jesus. And then I walked into the house Next morning, I was getting ready to do another crusade and I was putting my socks on, putting my shoes on. And my host ran into my bedroom and said, brother, can you, can you come outside right now? I said, well, I'm, I'm still, I haven't brushed my teeth yet. And he said, brother, please, it's only gonna take just a, a couple of minutes. Can you come outside right now? So I stepped out on the porch and he pointed down the street and said, the man that you prayed for yesterday that was paralyzed, he's walking down the street right now. God has healed him fully. Oh, y'all not, not loud enough for that. Anybody still believe in the healing power? I said, is there anybody that still believes in the healing power? We ran up to him to catch his story, get it on video. And he explained to us that he wasn't paralyzed from birth, but he was paralyzed through an accident on the job five years ago. And something fell on both of his feet and crushed his ankles. And he hadn't walked in five years. He laid on that bed for five years. But he said, there was something happening in my feet this morning. 
I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden I took a step and I was able to hold myself up and I took another step and I was able to hold myself up and I took a step walking down the street and by the time you got down here, God had fully healed me. I, I looked at my host and said, God knows how to stand you up on your feet. I said, God knows how to stand you up on your feet. I don't care how long you've been down. I don't care how hard you fell. I don't care who stepped on you while you were down. God knows how to stand you up on your feet. Look at your neighbor and tell him he's a healer. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, and I'm glad about it today. How about you? If you're glad about it, you ought to open your mouth and just give him 15 seconds of a crazy, radical, don't make no sense praise. Let everything that have breath. Brother Sound Man, can I get a little more push? I like my hair to blow back. I said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. He's a good God. And I find no fault in him. So to my brothers and sisters in Pakistan that are watching, we say, Bokhat Shukriya, Kudaka Barakadeh, Yesum Messi, Kenname, that is, thank you very much. God bless you in Jesus' name. How many are ready for the word of the Lord on today? Amen. I'm going to ask if you would rise to your feet with your Bible and your custody all over this house and turn with me to two passages of scripture. Please, please keep the Pakistan ministries in your prayers. Lord willing, we plan to go back in November. And we're looking for God to do some amazing things. Two passages of scripture on today, Isaiah chapter 53 and verses number one through four. And then Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 14 through 16. I, I'm not going to be before you long on today. Uh, I, I have another meeting at 945. And so I'm going to try to make that meeting. So I'm not going to be before you long today. Isaiah chapter 53 and verses number 1 through 5. If we have it, can we signify by saying Amen. I'm going to ask if you would join with me and lift up your voice and read it out loud because the scripture says thy word is nigh thee. Somebody knows the scripture like I do, even in thy mouth. The word of God makes an impression upon you when you read it out loud instead of just, read, just rehearsing it in your mind. Amen. God bless you, Senator Bishop Thomas. Verse number one, what does it say? Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, somebody shout glory. As we turn to Hebrews chapter 4, I want you to keep verse 4 of Isaiah 53 in the back of your mind. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Hebrews chapter 4. And verses number 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, 
Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Remain standing. We're going to pray. I want to lift from the 15th verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Hebrews. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. For a subject briefly this morning, I would like to preach about the gospel of empathy the gospel of empathy I don't normally take a subtopic but if if I did today if I have time I will tell you about the things he took to Calvary amen because he took our sins but there were some other things that he carried with him also amen let's pray father in the name of Jesus we thank you God for your spirit being in this place right now not only in this house God but it is radiating through the screen of every cell phone, every iPad, every smart device, every smart television into the living rooms and the homes of those that are watching online even right now. We pray and ask God that you would speak to us today. We came to this service, Lord, for a word from you. We came, God, not just wanting a word, but we came in need of a word. We've got situations in our lives, God, and we need a word. We've got trouble on every side, God, and we need a word. We've got a weight on our shoulders, God, and we need a word. We've got a battle in the spirit, and we need a word today. Speak to us, Jesus. Let your word become flesh. Let it become real and relevant and tangible to us that it might change us from the inside out. Break every yoke and break every fetter. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church and let your name be glorified. Higher heights and deeper depths, God, and closer walk we pray. Heal them that are sick today. Comfort them that are comfortless and give courage to them that are despondent. Make my tongue as the pen of the ready rider and touch your people with liberty, with power and with strength. And we will thank you and we will praise you. We will clap our hands and claim the victory today. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody ought to clap those hands and shout amen all over this house. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord, the gospel of empathy I just love the book of Hebrews it's one of my favorite books if not my most favorite book of the Bible because of the it provides for us the missing link if you will between the Old Testament and the New Testament I should say at the outset of this brief talk that I'm glad to be apostolic. I'm not trying to speak disrespect to any other belief system, but, but I'm proud to be apostolic. I'm proud, and I'm proud of the fact that, that, that we have some revelation concerning who God is in the person of Jesus Christ. I'm proud to know that we know that he is not the second person in the Trinity, but he's the only one in the Godhead. As a matter of fact, the fullness of the Godhead dwelled in that body. All of God was in that body. I, I'm glad to know. I'm glad to know that we are part of an organization that is still apostolic. I don't know if you heard Bishop, Bishop's message on last night even in keeping with our theme and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and I want every apostolic believer and every young person every young preacher uh, room to, to know today that it matters what we believe in these times even in this age of deception 
and false doctrine that is rampant and, and everybody on Facebook is a prophet and everybody on Instagram is, is, a, is an apostle. Do, am I talking to the right church today? Everybody can put a collar bar on and, and cloak themselves in a prayer shawl and put on weird mystical music and have incense, smoke floor, flying up in the atmosphere and then want to tell you what thus saith the Lord. I'm glad to know the truth today. How about you? It, it is important. What we believe matters. What we believe about God matters. What we know about who God is, that matters. What we believe about how salvation is realized and achieved in the life of the individual, that matters. You know, we're in the time where the devil is trying to blur the lines. And he's, he's been trying to do that since, since the very beginning. Trying to blur the lines between what is God and what is not God. What is right and what is wrong. He is trying to create gray areas. But I want every young preacher, young apostolic preacher, young PAW preacher to understand that it matters what you believe in these times. Do I have a witness in here? I'm glad to be apostolic I'm glad I'm glad I went water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ I'm glad that I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues I found out when the Holy Ghost came that it was more than just a good feeling it was more than just goosebumps and and hair standing back on the back of my neck but it was the power of God that came in and entered my soul and, and when God showed up I began to speak in other tongues as the spirit of God gave me the words to say anybody proud of the fact that you know who Jesus is and you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost I'm glad to know I'm glad to know that God requires a life from us I'm glad to know that God requires a, a standard of living Amen. We call it holiness. And, and I don't believe in a 20th century holiness and a 21st century holiness. I believe that holiness was and always will be the standard that God has set for the separation that should be existed between his people and those that are not his people. I believe that your character ought to change when God saves you. Do I have a witness in here? I believe, I believe that we ought to strive to be all that God is. I'm proud to be apostolic and I'm glad to know the revelation and truth. I'm very proud today to have come from a great apostolic lineage. I'm glad to have been exposed to the teachings of the apostolic fathers or the fathers of our great organization. I'm glad to have been the recipient of material, study material from Bishop Haywood, from Bishop Paddock, from Bishop Carl F. Smith. Bishop Harry L. Herman, some of the great Bible teachers, and those others, amen, of the Father's generation that we have received their, their writings, their information, their study material, and it informs us even yet today. It serves as the foundation and the basis of our understanding of the Word of God. And, and just as a brief footnote, I want to encourage every young pastor, every young minister today, I would be derelict in my duty if I did did not stand behind this pulpit and encourage you to fall in love with the teachings of the apostolic fathers. I promise you it'll make you a better minister. Come on, clap your hands and give God a great praise today. The book of Hebrews is one of my favorite books because it explains to us what is contained in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is full of types Shadows, patterns, figures, fashions, examples, and prophecies. The Old Testament shows us how God worked. And the Old Testament shows us God's method. It shows us God's process of, of how he separates his people from everybody else. The Old Testament shows us and demonstrates to us how God loves. It shows us what God thinks. It shows us how God operates. And sometimes you can get lost in the, the laws and the, the commandments that existed in the Old Testament. Amen. The Ten Commandments and the 613 ordinances of divine worship that God gave to Israel. 
praise God, 365 of them said, thou shalt not. 248 of them said, thou shalt. Far more negatives than positives. You could get lost in the way that God operated in the Old Testament and think that he was a God of all law and no love. But, but I would challenge you today to, to fall in love with books like the book of Romans or the book of Hebrews because it provides for us the connective tissue, the bridge, the link between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. We used to hear the saying that what is in the old contained is in the new explained. Well, I've come to find out that to be true by reading and studying the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, of course, the author of the book of Hebrews is, uh, is a mystery to us. Some most attribute the authorship to the apostle Paul and, and others say, well, there's evidence in the text that it perhaps was not Paul, amen, that wrote it. But I, I don't know one way or the other, but I do know that the Hebrew writer had to possess a knowledge of God. The Hebrew writer had to possess a knowledge of law. The Hebrew writer had to possess a knowledge of God's timeline. The Hebrew writer had to possess a knowledge of God's deity and a knowledge of God's power to bridge the gap to be the connective tissue between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Are you following me? Amen. He starts in chapter number one, praise God, and says that God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets, but in these times he have spoken to us by his son explains to us how God operated in the Old Testament that he used prophets and he used seers amen to preach and to prophesy to his people amen their message most often was a message of repentance because God's people started out good but they went bad almost as soon as they came out of Egypt so God sent the prophets under them to preach unto them them amen to to give them a message of repentance that you need to change that if you repent everything that God said that he would do for you he will do praise God but if you refuse to repent amen everything that God said that he would do for to you he will do and you know what they did praise God they killed the prophets you know amen everybody wants to be a prophet today and I'm not trying to speak disrespect but but when I study the Bible and really understand what the office and the position of the prophet was amen it was not a celebrated role Jesus praise God when Jesus came on the scene amen he looked out at Jerusalem and said oh Jerusalem Jerusalem thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee how oft I would have gathered thee together like a hen gathered her brood but thou wouldest not God sent the prophets unto them and they killed them amen that God sent the prophets unto them and they persecuted them well the Hebrew writer says that God at sundry times amen in, in different times and in various ways spake unto the fathers by the prophets but in these times amen in the the new testament church dispensation in the dispensation of grace the church age he has spoken unto us by his son you must understand what the scripture means when it deals with the son praise God that the son of God was the word of God amen you cannot separate the son of God from the word because John chapter 1 and verse number 1 tells me that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made jump down the verse number 14 and you find out that the word became flesh and did what and dwelt among us amen that's Jesus look at your body tell him that's Jesus so so you cannot separate praise God the word from the son so when a verse verse number two and verse number one says that he has spoken unto us by his son that lets us know that he has spoken unto us by his word now you must understand where we get the word from praise God I know we are in a digital age Bishop Foster amen and 
everybody can pull up the cell phone and turn on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and get a word but I came to tell you praise God that's not how God gives it you've got to be connected to his system in order to get what he's got from you there is no word to be had outside of his church do I have a witness in this church today I, I came I came amen to, to, to come against every spirit of spiritualism today every spirit of mysticism today that says that I can get a word from myself I don't need no pastor I don't need no church the devil is a lie if you're going to get what God has for you you got to be connected to how he gives it do I have a witness up in here you ought to clap your hands and shout hallelujah hath in these last times spoken unto us I'm a Bible preacher pardon me today I, amen y'all are shout tonight I, I'm just here to preach the Bible amen uh, hath in these times spoken unto us by his word then, then, he, then, he, then he transitions this is what I love about the Hebrew writer he, he transitions now amen to God amen he, he transitions to God remember remember he's got a foot in the Old Testament amen and he's got a foot in the New Testament he he transitions now to God in verse number three he says who is the brightness of his glory the express image of his person now you must understand what the Hebrew writer is saying to us he amen he knows that that God is a spirit and, and a spirit does not have substance a spirit does not have body a spirit does not have blood a spirit amen you can't see a spirit you can't catch a spirit you can't feel a spirit so so he, he says that 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 Jesus is the express image of God what that simply means is that Jesus amen is the very image of God amen let me drop this on you you remember in, in the book of Genesis is when, when God, Genesis 1 and verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then the scripture says, in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. Amen. God made man after to the image. Amen. But I want you to understand that the image of God was not something that God just imagined that I'm going to make man to like this. But the image of God was a specific image. It was himself in the person of Jesus Christ. You must understand in the book of Revelation, praise God, it, it calls Jesus the beginning of the creation of God. He is the beginning. Shout, somebody shout the beginning. He is the beginning of the creation of God and the, what is the creation well there's a difference between create and make to, to create is to cause to exist in the mind to make is to fashion to form and produce amen so when the scripture says that Jesus is the beginning of the creation of God that simply means that before there was a when or where a then or a there before there was an earth before there was man before there was cattle the first thing that God thought about was himself amen the first thing that God did if I can use my sanctified mind amen standing praise God in in the midst of nothingness the first thing he did uh, was he proposed to himself a form amen he, he did not have a form he proposed to himself a form and called that form his image it existed in his mind and he said this image this image is is, is going to have a uh, uh, two protrusions out of each side amen a left arm and a right arm and, and at, at the, the extremity of the left arm is going to be a hand and I, I'm going to put five fingers on that hand because this is my image I, I want my image to be functional amen on the right I put amen an, another extremity I'll call it a hand on that side I put five fingers on that hand but um, uh, extending from beneath the image I, I put two more protrusions I call them legs and I, I put feet at the end of it. All of that is in the image of God. But not only that, he, he endowed then, he said an image without me is, is empty so I'll get in that image. I'll install into that image. I'll write on that image hard drive. I'll put wisdom, knowledge, might, intelligence, reason, mental faculty 
iniquities I'll put all of that in the image now you must understand he is doing this in his mind amen the image did not materialize yet in reality it would not materialize for another 4,000 years when Jesus would come on the scene but the image existed in the mind of God so then God says let us make man to my image amen now how Jesus how God can you make man can you make man fashion produce mold after an image that only exists in your mind I came to tell you what Isaiah said that he calleth those things that be not as though they were so when God made man in his image he made him to look like and be like Jesus because that was the image of God did you catch that amen if you caught it you ought to clap your hand and shout hallelujah shout hallelujah another time amen so God made man in his image and he installed in Adam amen with you know Adam had to have a wisdom amen in order to name all of the animals you know what God told Adam amen I'm giving you dominion take the earth subdue it you got control God then passed all of the animals before Adam amen and said now because I've given you dominion you name them and whatever you name them that's going to be the name of it amen it had to take a wisdom praise God for, for Adam to, to look at a dog and say hmm that's a dog it had to take a wisdom for Adam to look at a cow and say hmm that's a cow amen and whatever he named it back then that's the name of it now amen but I come to tell you, amen, that even though man was made upright, uh, praise God, he lost his position in God. You know how he lost it, brothers and sisters. Amen. You know what he did. Amen. You know what happened. God gave him the woman. Praise God, because he said it's not good for man to be alone, so I'll give him a help me. He can't fulfill my command to replenish the earth, to multiply, so I'll give him a help me. Made the woman. You know what happened. Amen. He gave her the commandment that all of the trees in the garden we can freely eat but the tree in the middle of the garden we can't even touch it don't even go near it she knew what to do and she knew what not to do amen the scripture tells us that the serpent pray, praise God beguiled her the serpent tricked her amen how did the serpent trick her he said God knows that if you eat that fruit amen you are going to be like God in other words amen God knows if you eat that fruit you're going to be like him and because the desire was to be like him because they did not know anything other than being like him amen she partook of the fruit because she was tricked into believing that if I eat this fruit I'll be like God amen the devil will twist your desire even your desire to walk with God the devil knows how to twist your desire to get you confused and caught up you know what the Bible says she ate I gotta slow down here you know what the Bible says she ate and she gave to her husband and he not being tricked he knew exactly what he was doing Elder Shaw he made a conscious decision to be with his wife and of course the Bible lets us know amen that his sin his disobedience praise God open the door to for sin to enter into the nature of man can I preach the Bible here for about 10 more minutes amen do me a favor lift your hands and shout hallelujah shout hallelujah another time now 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 we're in a situation now praise God where sin has now entered the nature of man but the scripture lets us know in the book of Romans that by one man's disobedience sin entered into the world and death by sin so then death hath passed unto all men because that all men have sin when Adam sinned in the garden of Eden it opened the door and allowed sin now to enter into the nature of man sin did not enter into our bloodstream sin entered into our nature this is why the apostle Paul says in the book of Ephesians that we were by nature the children of wrath even as others amen we were not born sinners amen this is an important distinction at home and we were not born sinners we were born in sin amen David said behold I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did 
my mother conceive me. We were not born sinners. We were born in sin. But we became sinners when we began sinning. And how soon did we begin sinning? Well, the book of Isaiah tells us that the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lie. As soon as we were born, the fallen nature began to exert itself. And as soon as we were born, we needed a savior. Amen. You ought to clap your hand and shout hallelujah shout hallelujah another time as soon as we were born we needed a savior and this is what the Hebrew writer touches on amen as he walks through chapter one as he walks through chapter two amen he tells us about this savior and says we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels amen crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man now you must understand brothers and sisters that the condition of sin was bad but it was not untenable the, the condition of sin was so dark and so wicked and so the opposite of God that God's requirement to atone for sin from the very beginning was blood God has always required blood as the atonement as the cover for the sin of humanity amen but in the case of all of humanity praise God not just anybody's blood would do in the, in the Old Testament he was content temporarily amen with the blood of bulls and of goats and of sacrifices it was not a permanent solution it was a temporary solution to hold back God's anger amen until the time of reformation amen everybody shout reformation I'm not talking about the reformation in 1517 but when you talk about the reformation that's noted in the book of Hebrews chapter number 9 amen that reformation it doesn't have nothing to do with Martin Luther that reformation doesn't have nothing to do with the Catholic Church but that reformation is the coming of the Messiah so in other words the blood of bulls and of goats and sacrifices uh, temporarily appease the heart of God uh, until the ultimate sacrifice uh, until the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world uh, would materialize and give his life uh, amen anybody glad about the lamb uh, amen you ought to clap your hands and shout hallelujah yeah. And I'm getting ready to close here amen so we see now in chapter number 4 amen the Hebrew writer says praise God that we that we now have received a great high priest amen you must understand the role of the high priest he was the in between between God and man amen the, the high priest was the one who would get to God on behalf of the people and you know Know the service that the high priest rendered uh, the high priest one day a year amen twice on that one day uh, would slay the sacrifice at the altar of sacrifice uh, amen slit the throat of the sacrifice blame the drain the blood into a basin uh, then take that blood uh, into the second room of the tabernacle uh, amen the first room was the sanctuary amen where the where the altar of incense was uh, where the seven golden candles six stood uh, amen and the table of showbread uh, but the high priest would go into the second room uh, which is the holiest of holies uh, where the ark of the covenant sat uh, the ark of the covenant was a piece of furniture uh, amen that inside the ark uh, amen contained three things uh, thank God uh, a golden pot of manna which represents God's provision uh, praise God the, the ten commandments uh, which represents God's law and, and Aaron's rod that budded uh, which represents God's authority amen that that ark of the covenant uh, was overlaid with gold uh, and above the ark uh, sat two cherubs 
cherubims uh, amen facing the mercy seat uh, and above the mercy seat uh, that's where the presence of God dwelt on the earth uh, in the form of a white smoke uh, so when the high priest would take the blood of the sacrifice uh, he would go into the holiest of holies uh, he went in the first time uh, to take the blood in to atone for his own sins uh, and the sins of his sons uh, and then he would go back out, uh, do the process all over again uh, and then go in again uh, to make the sacrifice uh, praise God to make the atonement uh, for the sins of the people uh, this is what the high priest did uh, annually on the day of atonement uh, well the bible says uh, that we have a great high priest uh, we have a greater high priest uh, and what makes this high priest greater than that high priest uh, Amen. This high priest uh, did not have to go in twice uh, because this high priest uh, knew no sin. Uh, so all he had to do was step in one time uh, and obtain eternal redemption for us all. Uh, amen. This high priest, uh, this high priest uh, that is passed into the heavens, uh, praise God. The Hebrew writer says, uh, It's Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, amen. And then I love verse 15. Uh, I promise you I'm getting ready to head to my seat. Uh, but we have not an high priest uh, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Uh, that's a double negative. Uh, amen. Anytime you have a double negative, uh, whatever the statement that the double negative asserts uh, is actually the opposite of what it is asserting. Uh, amen. So that means that we do have a high priest uh, which can be touched with the feeling of my infirmity. Uh, amen. Do, ever do me a favor. Amen. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Uh, shout hallelujah another time. Uh, amen. We have a high priest uh, that can be touched. Uh, amen. That is, uh, amen. We have a high priest uh, that I identifies with us I began to think about sympathy I began to think about empathy I began to think about mercy I began to think about compassion I began to think about love I began to think about sacrifice and I've come to understand amen that there's a difference between sympathy and empathy amen sympathy sympathy sees me fall in a hole and, and cries for me oh, I feel so bad that you're down there what happened I'm praying for you sympathy says I'm praying for you amen sympathy sees me down there and walks away praying for me they may have the best intention but sometimes I need a little bit more than just prayer as a matter of fact when people tell you they're gonna pray for you 90% of the time they lying anyway Lord have mercy amen sympathy sympathy sees me in the hole amen and just prays for me while I'm down there but that's not what God did amen God did not just have sympathy on us amen but he had empathy because empathy is the very opposite empathy sees me in the hole and then comes down there where I am to get me I wish I had somebody in here that would catch the revelation amen I said empathy is when one sees me in the hole and then it's moved amen to come down there and suffer with me and then not just come down there and suffer with me but to come up with a solution so that we both can get out of the mess that we are in uh, I'm getting ready to tune up brother Demetrius amen uh, can you, uh, give me five minutes amen so the bible says that we have not a high priest who cannot be touched somebody shall touch with the feelings of our infirmity now you must understand that God in his godness is so holy his holiness is so magnanimous it is so much the polar opposite of the human experience that God came down and says now I know my creation I 
know what I want from my creation. My creation can't figure it out on their own. I've given them my law and they still mess up. I've given them my prophets and they still mess up. My creation is not equipped to give me back my righteousness and my holiness. So I've got to send an example to my creation to show my creation not only Amen. Can you be saved? But you can overcome sin. Not only can you overcome sin, but you can overcome everything that is in the fallen nature that stands in opposition to my holiness in you. Can I break it down for a minute? God coming as a man now. Is God empathizing with us? Amen. Because he did not want man to die in his sin and because there was nobody qualified to come down and be our sacrifice our savior and more importantly our example God the eternal spirit amen came down wrapped himself in flesh uh, amen to be our savior uh, now you must understand uh, that when he died uh, he did not just die for our sin uh, the scripture says that God laid on him uh, that that means that God laid on that body amen the iniquity of us all uh, amen somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah shout hallelujah another time God laid on that body the iniquity of us all amen he punished his body for the depth of sin he punished his body for every lie that would be told he punished his body for every fornication that would be executed he punished his body for every evil thought he that body for the dirt that you would do behind closed doors. He punished that body for what you would look at on the internet last night. He punished that body for every cuss word that came out your mouth. He died for your sin. Is there anybody in here that's glad that he died for your sin? As a matter of fact, let me pause for station identification. If I'm in an apostolic church uh, that knows something about the substance the quality uh, of the blood of Jesus uh, I want you to take 15 seconds uh, and open up your mouth uh, and give him a great praise in here uh, it reaches to the highest mountain uh, it flows to the lowest valley uh, somebody ought to open up your mouth uh, and give him a shout I said give him a shot in here but I come to find out brother chairman and I'm headed to my seat amen we love to quote Isaiah 53 and 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with every stripe we are here but I come to find out that there is as much significance in verse number four as in verse number five somebody shout glory what is the significance preacher thank you I'm glad you asked the Bible said that surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows I'm trying to tell you about the other things that he took to Calvary with him. our griefs and our sorrows you must understand that the Hebrew word for griefs is the word holy and that word means sickness it means maladies and afflictions it also means sadness or the emotions that we feel that cause us distress and agony look at your name and said he took that up there and if that is not far for you then the Hebrew word for sorrows is makobe and this 
this word means our pain, our physical pain, our mental pains. I come to tell the PAW that when Jesus died, when he suffered, he did not just die for your sin, but he died for your depression too. I wish I was talking to a church up in here. I said he did not just die for your iniquities, but he took our pain. He took our frustration. He took our agony. He took our anxiety. He took our anger. And all of that hung on the cross with him. As a matter of fact, he carried our trauma. I found out that nine out of every ten people have been in traumatic situations in their life. And most of that nine, the trauma happened within the first 10 to 15 years of your life. So we've been through trauma and he carried our trauma because he's been through it too. But I heard, I heard him say that they killed me, they whipped me, they beat on me and they hung me on the cross and they laid me in the tomb but when I rose I rose with all power in my hand you mean to tell me Jesus that all of the trauma all of the pain all of the agony you went through you came out on the other side with the victory yes that's exactly what I'm telling you so I came to the PAW to tell somebody I don't care what you're struggling with I don't care if you cry yourself to sleep I don't care if you feel anxious right now he took that to Calvary because he's been touched he knows how we feel he didn't have sympathy on us he had empathy on us that's why I can never be a Trinitarian because the Trinity asserts that God has sympathy on my agony and then said hey son you go down and die for that there's no empathy in the Trinity but when you got to talking about the oneness God saw my situation and said I'm coming down myself to see about you I'm going to get in the hole with you and I'm going to pull you out do me a favor grab your neighbor by the hand and just pull on them a little and tell them I'm coming out I'm coming out today if he's got the victory then I can have it too if he was beaten and they talk about me I can get the victory too if he was rejected and I struggle with a feeling of rejection he touched her and I can be victorious too if he was wounded by so called friends then I can get the victory too if he was betrayed by those who were supposed to love him then I can get the victory too I didn't come today with no new revelation I didn't come today to tell you no check is in the mail I came to tell you that God loved you so much he got in your depression he got down in your fear he got down in your anxiety and said I'm going to take that from you do I have a witness in here now the question is and I'm getting ready to close in 30 seconds the question is because he took it why am I hanging on to it because he carried it why am I trying to pick it up I came to the convention to lay some stuff down. I came to the convention to drop off some stuff. St. Louis is going to be a little bit heavier because I'm
I'm leaving my anxiety. I'm leaving my fear. I'm leaving my anger. I'm leaving my depression. I'm leaving it all here. And I'm getting ready to walk in my victory. I'm getting ready. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm coming out of because he pulled me out of. I'm getting ready. I have not had the courage thus far. But now, because he went to Calvary, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. So I'm leaving here with my freedom. Do me a favor. Take a step. That was a powerful step. That was a step of victory. Do me a favor. Take another step. That was another power step. That was a power of joy. I'm leaving anxiety and I'm stepping into peace. I'm leaving frustration and I'm stepping into happiness. I'm leaving pride and I'm stepping into humility. I'm leaving hatred and I'm stepping into love. I'm leaving depression and I'm stepping into peace. I'm coming out. If you're coming out, take 20 seconds and give him a crowd of praise. Don't make no sin. Somebody. Anybody, everybody, open up your mouth and give him a shout. Get to step it. Step out of that seat. Come on, young people. Let's walk into freedom. Let's walk out of the stronghold. Get out of your seat and step into the promise of God. Get out of that seat and step into joy. Get out of that seat and step into healing.
need a passive praiser. I don't need a passive worshiper. I don't need anybody scared. I said I'm one step away from the supernatural favor of God. Will you step out with me? Grab that hand and step out. Step, 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 out. step, 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 out. step, out. step For you, Jesus. It's time for somebody to take a step. Take a step of faith. You can receive the strength of God through water baptism in Jesus' name. 
and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Take a step of faith if you're under the sound of my voice and you do not know him as your Lord and Savior as expressed through water baptism in Jesus and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Come right now, come right now, come right now. All he wants is to save you. All he wants is to take your things and apply the blood to it. Give him your heart today. I know we don't say it much, but if you desire to be reclaimed, you can be reclaimed at the convention. The altar is yours. This is a place of alteration. This is the place where we give God a heart of flesh. You can receive empowerment now. You can receive strength now. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Receive Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. To God be the Lord. right now because somebody just stepped in to the greatest gift known to man this young lady just got the gift of the Holy Ghost right here at this altar I need somebody to jump up on your feet right now and praise God in advance like it's your grandchild come on come on come on come on come on come on in here give God a radical praise that a young person took Step.
favor look at somebody tell them I'm excited about your next step I don't like that neighbor find somebody that'll get happy for you find somebody new and say neighbor I'm excited about your next step thank you for joining us virtually for the National Summer Convention experience of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world as we go higher in Jesus name for more information, please visit www.pawinc.org or any of our social media platforms. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you.